Hello everybody, Jeffrey McAvoy here. Welcome to my video about replacing disc brake rotors and front hub bearings on your MGB. It's all good messing around with my TRX4 and everything, but uh, it's past time we actually got things done up in here. So you don't necessarily have to do both interventions at once. You can do one or the other depending on what's needed. But I'm doing both of these because this car's been laid up for pretty much the past decade. So um, it's, uh, yeah, it's the final step to get it back on the road. So I've done many other things to it, you know, the clutch was, uh, was uh, stuck, uh, you know, anything, all the hydraulics have been replaced and serviced and, and, you know, loads of stuff. Anyway, I've also made a few posts about this on Instagram for those of you f who follow. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd make one video about this last intervention that I did uh, before setting it up finally and delivering it to the customer. So it's all about, um, you know, removing obviously the front wheel most definitely that's the first step i'm pretty sure you can you know you can jack it up and, and figure that out then removing the the uh, old cotter pin and discarding it because you're not going to be reusing it ever again now you have to be careful when you actually drop the um drop the bearing out because um there might be some shims in there there are not always but in this case they are um they were actually stuck onto the bearing and the grease inside there just went all hard and it pretty much felt like some old toffee like you'd find in between the cushions of your sofa or something you know that kind of stuff see there are a couple of other shims in there that are going to be cleaned and reused later on and that's pretty much it you know take the hub and um, take the hub off and bring it to your workbench and whack the uh, inner bearing out uh, with the spacer using a suitable drift and preferably a heavy hammer. Toffee, anyone? Anyway, yeah, got to get rid of that, uh, you know, old grease and uh, that stuff pretty much turned to caramel and the old bearing is going to be discarded. I do not know if I just destroyed that by whacking it out, but um, it's going to be replaced anyway, so it doesn't matter. Grab some old rags or uh, paper or whatever and um, get rid of all that useless grease that's on there. You know, it's gone all sticky and uh, yeah, it's kind of gross. So. And to remove the disc from the hub, you only have a set of four bolts, uh, 916, and you just knock the hub out. Hi, Mom. Again, remove all that old useless grease in there. You're not supposed to put some in there in the first place. And then I just dropped the whole thing in the ultrasonic cleaner. You know, it's, uh, I'm really glad to have that thing. It works for me instead of having to, you know, clean parts manually and do stuff. This thing saves quite a lot of time now. Obviously not, the, uh, not every DIYer has this in the back of his workshop, but uh, this is my, you know, I'm running a business. So this, uh, this is something that I have. Now basically you have to drift the outer bearing races, there are a couple of notches on the inside of the, um, of the hub that you can uh, locate a suitable drift on and then just hammer it out squarely uh, from one side to the other and uh, it'll, just, it'll just pop out. Now don't dump these uh, outer races just yet, they are going to come in handy later on, you'll see. Make sure that the mating surfaces are absolutely spotlessly clean. It's very important. And yeah, my take on this is a little trick of the trade here for you if you don't have a press. Uh, even if you do, in fact, you know, just drop the, uh, drop the bearings overnight in your, uh, in your freezer. It's perfectly fine, perfectly, uh, you know, it'll just uh, retract slightly. And uh, here the hub itself has expanded due to the heat of the ultrasonic cleaner, which is good. And then just use the old bearing race and start whacking the new one in place. Make sure that it goes down squarely. You don't want to have it, uh, you know, put pull to one side or another because you might deform it or, you know, it's never happened to me. But uh, just be careful and make sure that it goes down squarely. Once you can't go down any further, grab your drift again and make sure that you are extra careful because you are more prone to hurt yourself than to damage anything on the hub. Trust me. Make sure that you, uh, yeah, make it descend nice and square on the uh, lip. That's going to stop it. And once it's down there, you, you're going to know. You're going to know when because the parts are going to start bouncing around, and it's going to make, uh, you know, the it makes a metallic 
ting that uh, that doesn't occur before so you'll definitely know when it's down there just check visually to make sure and here it goes again with the other bearing obviously make sure that you are locating the taper uh, towards the outside you know it's it's self-explanatory you know it uh, but I'm just mentioning it anyway you never know anyway when you're done that they're both driven home just check visually get the, get a nice bright light in there and make sure that they are uh, both sitting squarely where they're supposed to and again you make sure that everything is nice and spotlessly clean you don't you don't have any grit or dirt in there that would damage uh, the bearing in the long run now since these come out of the freezer they're still thawing and uh, you know have some condensation on it so I'll leave them to warm up gently on the top of the ultrasonic cleaner. While they're doing that, uh, remove the brand new disc from the packaging, and you can realize that uh, you know it's it's um, it's all oily. Now here's something that's not on the book. You know you can do it or don't. You know it's entirely up to you. But it's something that I do. Apply a, an extremely light, thin film of um, anti-seize um, of anti-seize compound you know copper anti-seize or you know whatever it's called stick some on the bolts as well just to make sure that they don't uh, they don't stick in there forever you know having these gripped up locked in place for life uh, has happened to me and it's quite annoying to get them out so that's my take on doing it anyway don't forget to put the the, um, the grow washers back in there obviously and um, and stick the uh, stick the nuts back in place. Don't forget to tighten them, of course. Here's another uh, trick of the trade here that uh, that I usually do. I, I actually do this often. To so put a slight drop of paint onto the nut and bolt, and that tells you visually by just by looking at it, you can tell if a uh, bolt you know loosened or whatever. So that's something that you can definitely do. Just take the wheel off, and you can you can see instantly if something has moved or not. Now using some brake cleaner, clean the uh, face of the disc and insert the hub spacer in there. Don't put any grease around it. It's ridiculous. It's not done. You don't, you're not supposed to do that. Don't know why people keep on you know, packing that thing with grease. You're not supposed to do that. Don't pack it with grease. Just put enough grease on and inside the bearing. You know, Pack it up and make it roll with your fingers in its race repack it so on and so forth until it's nice and uh, nice and full that's all you need then grab the new oil seal and um, use your um, your greasy fingers to um, uh, apply a slight film of grease on the edges it helps to drive it in now using a uh, you know like a small dead blow hammer something like that you can drive it in place make sure that you're not deforming it or anything or making any kinks in it that would be very annoying it fling grease all over the disc, which which uh, well, which isn't a good idea, you know. Anyway, wipe the axle stub clean, and first I, I refit the bearing without any spacers, without any shims or anything, and just put it, you know, slightly tight um, to uh, pull everything together for once, and uh, you know, distribute the grease evenly. So rotating left and right, giving it a few spins. It's uh, most definitely too tight, but uh, not too tight either for now. Anyway, we're going to start shimming. So remove the castellated nut, remove the bearing, and I'm going to start by replacing the shims that were in there in the first place, minus one. I only put two this time. And we'll see where, where, where we stand. And then afterwards, it's a matter of measuring the end float. So you're supposed to torque this down in between 40 and 70 foot-pounds of torque. That spins nice and freely. I'm happy with that. So I'll release the torque and reapply some torque again in between 40 and 70. This gives the latitude to be able to find the, um, you know, the place in the castellated nut where you could fit a new cotter pin. Now the end float in here is supposed to be of 0.1 millimeter so uh, that's why I hooked up the uh, dial gauge on there and it's also a matter of uh, checking the um, the disc run out I guess 
even though it's brand new, you know, in some books they'll tell you to check it. While the thing was rigged up, I thought I'd uh, give it a spin and show you anyhow. There it is. Again, I uh, can't, uh, you know, I can't insist enough on that. You know, your disc has to, uh, anything with brakes, generally speaking, has to be completely free of grease. So, degrease it again with some brake cleaner. You know, it does what it says on the can. It cleans brakes, so that's what it's for, for once. You know, you can degrease the floor if you like, but uh, that's what it's for initially. Preparing a new cotter pin, because you don't want your wheel flying off now, would you? Didn't think so. And then um, refit the uh, the grease cap, fill it halfway with grease, and then refit it. Now it's a matter of refitting the uh, brake calipers. So obviously you want to fit the lock tab first before sticking the bolts in there, obviously. And torque that down as well. I uh, can't remember exactly. Uh, I'll write it down in the comments. But uh, off the top of my head, I forgot. It's in the book somewhere. I'll look that up for you. And obviously, you know, um, lo uh, lock the tabs, I suppose. Now, last step here is to remove the old um, brake pads. So remove and discard the old uh, retaining, uh, retaining pads and split pins, most deaf. And very, very carefully, the, these calipers are actually brand new, so it's, uh, it's, it's uh, pretty easy to do uh, just to press back the, uh, the pistons back into, into the caliper. Now this is something new, it's the first time that I'm doing this, applying a very light, very very light, uh, it's not even a coat of grease, it's uh, well, copper grease again, extremely light on the outer side of the pad, don't put them on the inside, crazy or what? Uh, and yeah, very very light and it's supposed to stop, um, to stop brakes squealing, you know, I had the case recently and uh, drove me nuts. And do it or not, it's not in the book, so if you're not comfortable with doing it, don't do it. You know, uh, just be careful not to put any on, uh, on the new brake pads, quite obviously. Then it's just a matter of fitting the new uh, retaining pads with the tabs uh, facing inwards, sticking the new cotter pins in there, and then uh, it's pretty much done. Now depress the brake pedal a couple of times to make sure that everything is seated properly. which apparently it has beautifully, very happy about that. Then, uh, yes, yeah, just a matter of stepping out the car, just making sure that uh, you didn't forget anything, that everything is properly in place, that um, everything rotates, and uh, yeah, just make sure you didn't forget anything. It would be a pain in the ass to find out that there are some bolts on the floor when they're supposed to be on the car. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Thank you all very much for watching and um, yeah, I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out everybody. Thanks again.